Hi everyone, uh, just a quick video talking you through the questions from exercise 2B, the energy of springs exercise. Okay, just in case you had any questions about where I was going to answer this from. Right, number one is fairly straightforward. We've got a length of 3, we've got a lambda of 60, and an x of 2. So it's just a case of dumping those numbers into lambda x squared over 2L. Okay, so that's 60 times 2 squared over 6 you should get 40 joules for number one. That's quite straightforward. Okay, Number two, a um, little bit trickier actually this one, because you don't know lambda, but you've been given some information to work it out. Um, I can't remember if I've mentioned this or not, but lambda is the Newton's required, Newton's required, to um, to double the length of something or to extend it by its original length. Okay, so double the length of a spring. So if a, if a spring's got a lambda of 30, it means if you apply 30 newtons, the spring will be twice as long, the extension will be equal to the length. So we've got this natural uh, spring with a natural length of 0.4 meters. And we're also told that um, where are we? 18 newtons is enough to stretch or compress it by 5 centimetres. Now, to get lambda, we need to know how many newtons would be required to stretch or compress by 40 centimetres because that's the natural length. So if you times by 8, you get 144 newtons would be required to stretch or compress the spring by 40 centimetres, 0.4 metres. So our lambda then becomes 144. Okay, that's probably the trickiest bit of this question. Okay, after that then, we know that they want to squash it into a box of 15 centimeters. So the extension or well compression in this case needs to be 0.25. We need to lose 25 centimeters if it's going to fit into a 15 centimeter box. And so the work done will be 144 times 0.25 squared over 0.8 double the natural length that's 11.25 joules okay you may have found another way of doing that one but the easiest way I think was to find lambda first the amount of force required to double the length and once you've got lambda you can use the standard formula okay then we jump to number four number four was about stretching something uh, and then releasing it and seeing how fast the block moves. So we've got a spring or elastic that's got a natural length of 2 meters and is extended by 0 0.5 and then we've got our block on the end which is 0 0.1 kilograms. And so what happens is when you stretch the spring or the string you, you put this energy in and then when you release it that energy gets transferred to kinetic energy of the block. So your first job is to work out how much elastic energy is stored. So we know that lambda is 45 for this question. So 45 times 0 0.5 squared over 4 that gives you 2.81 joules. Okay, That's the energy that's currently stored in the string then when it's released and it comes back to its sort of natural length which is when it goes slack so when all of the energy in the string has been converted to kinetic energy what we can say then is that a half mv squared is equal to 2.81 joules and if you divide through by 0 0.05 and then square root it you should get a V of 7.5 meters per second. When it says the string goes slack, what it means is there's no energy stored in it because it's not tight anymore, it's not been stretched. Um, what happens after that? Well, as the as the block passes this this middle point here, where this like the natural length there, as it goes to the other side, the spring goes into a compressed state and the kinetic energy gets re-transferred back into elastic energy on the other side. And since there's 2.81 joules of kinetic energy, that'll transfer to 2.81 joules of elastic energy. This time it's compression rather than extension. 
and so the block will just keep sort of what well, the partial width is to oscillate it's just going to sort of bounce between being 0.5 that side in compression and 0.05 that side in extension because the 2.81 joules is just going to keep getting transferred between elastic and kinetic back to elastic back to kinetic as long as it's a, a loss free system okay in reality there would be friction and you'd lose some energy every time the block moved and so eventually it would just settle in the middle you'd, you'd lose all the energy that you once had okay and then we skip to number 10 okay let me just find my notes on the question okay so number 10 the steeple jack that's somebody who climbs up chimneys if you're wondering the steeple jack is falling when he falls, his rope becomes, becomes taut, and then the question is, how much further does he fall? Okay, so after he's fallen the two meters, at the point where his string sort of goes tight, taut, okay, he's got some kinetic energy. So his kinetic energy Right, so his kinetic energy is equal to his change of GPE. All right, so gravitational potential energy. So that is 80 times 9.8 times 2. So if he loses 1,568 joules of gravitational potential until his rope goes taut, that is all kinetic energy. Then what happens as the as the rope starts to stretch, this energy is going to be converted to elastic energy. Eventually, the rope is going to stop his fall. In which case, all of his kinetic energy is going to be transferred into the string, plus any extra energy because he's obviously going to fall a little bit further than the two meters that he's already fallen. So the elastic energy. Is equal to the 1568 joules of energy that he's currently got in the form of kinetic energy plus any further gravitational potential energy changes okay so mgh well mg is 784 and what we can do is call the any further he falls x because he's going to be extending the rope right so if we now put an expression for elastic energy so lambda is 3920 so 3920 x squared over 2 L and L is 2 so we get a 4 down there so the elastic energy in the rope is equal to the 1568 joules of energy he's already got plus 784 times any further meters that he falls okay if you double that around you can make a quadratic okay so you can get it into this form 980x squared minus 784x minus 1568 equals zero you can use the quadratic formula to find that a solution for x there is 1.73 meters so that's how much further he fell but the trick is to realize that the energy going into the string is only coming from one place really it's coming from any gpe that he's losing by falling okay okay question 11 then not too bad this one okay so we've got two points four meters apart and between them is a rope of natural length two meters so you can from the very beginning this rope is already being compressed with an uh, so stretched with an extension of two meters all right so this is before anything really happens in this question there is already energy stored in the string okay how much energy so elastic energy is 40 times 2 squared over 2 squared so obviously that lot that cancels out so at the very beginning of this question before you pull the rope sideways or anything like that there is already 40 joules of energy stored okay 
Then it says that the string is pulled sideways like this. Okay. And you've got this like this ball as well there. Okay. And it's pulled sideways by one meter. Okay, now remember this was four meters across the top. To work out how much energy is in the string now, we need to work out how much extension there currently is on the string compared to its natural length. Okay, what you need to do is a little bit of Pythagoras. So you've got a two there and a one there, and this is a right angle. So using Pythagoras, you can work out that just one hypotenuse is 2.23 dot dot dot, it's quite a long number, meters long. And obviously exactly the same on the other side, it's symmetrical. So at this point, the total length of the string is 4.47 meters long. Okay. Which means that at this point, the extension, because it had a natural length of 2 meters, is 2.47 meters long. Um, spread equally obviously between the two sides but for the spring on the whole they, it's currently got a, a full extension of 2.47 meters which means we can calculate the elastic energy that's in the string now okay so it's still 40 for lambda this time our total extension for the whole string is 2.47 squared and we've still got twice the natural length on the bottom which is 4 and you get 61 0.11 joules. So in its original state it had 40 joules of elastic energy being stored and in its um, stretched, well further stretched state it's got 61.11 joules of energy being stored. So we've increased the amount of energy being stored okay, by 21.11 joules and that number is really important because what happens then in this question is that we release the string, this ball fires that way, and the string comes back to this state, okay, um, back to how it started. But when it comes back to where it started, remember, it's still got 40 joules of elastic energy in this original state. So it's only the extra 21.11 joules that gets converted into kinetic energy, okay. I think a common fault in this question is people assume that all 61.1 joules are going to become kinetic, but they don't, okay? Because there needs to be 40 joules still in the string when it goes back to being sort of just a horizontal string in my diagram, okay? So then if we set that to be a half mv squared, it's 21.11. You can work that through and get that v is 20.5 meters per second for the object that has got a mass of it's like 0.1 kilograms okay so divide by 0.05 and square root it okay but this is the important bit realizing that it's only the extra 21.11 joules that become kinetic energy the other 40 are still in the string when it goes back to its natural state okay and then we've just got one more question to do which is question 13 which is about the circus performer. Okay. In question 13, then, right. In this question, there's uh, a couple of diagrams required, I think, to see what's going on. So originally, we've got an eight meter rope stretched between um, a 10 meter gap. Okay. So we've got fixings there and there, and so. At the very outset, this rope is already stretched. It's already got some elastic energy in it. Okay. Now we don't know lambda, but we do know at this stage that x is two and that l is eight. So if we do what we can, then you end up with lambda x squared, so four lambda over two l, which is sixteen. Right. Then she drops to by twelve meters. Okay, well, I'm going to get a decent pen here. So she drops 12 meters. And if I just complete the right angle triangle, because I need some lengths here to find the extension. So we've got five that side, five that side. Now, if you do Pythagoras, you've got 13 meters there and 13 meters there. 
So the total length of the rope at this point is 26 metres, 13 down one side, 13 back up the other side, which means the extension at this point is 18 metres. Remember it was 8 metres long to start with. Okay, and L was still 8, is still the same rope. Okay, again, if we put those numbers into the elastic energy formula, 18 squared is 324, so 324 lambda again over 16. So we've gone from having 4 lambda over 16 joules to having 324 lambda over 16 joules. There's a massive amount of elastic energy increase. Okay. Where does the energy come from? Well, it's come from the change of the gravitational potential energy. Now, the, the circus act person is 50 kilograms. So we've got a 50 kilogram mass dropping by 12 meters. So what we can say is that the 324 lambda over 16 is coming from the 4 lambda over 16 that we had to begin with plus the MGH, the joules which were lost from the acrobat when she dropped that got converted to elastic energy in the rope. Okay, MGH is 5,008. 180 okay so 324 lambda over 16 is equal to 4 lambda over 16 plus 5880 if we take the 4 lambda over 16 to the other side and take it away what we get left with is 320 lambda over 16 equals 5880 do a bit of shuffling around and you can get that lambda must be 294 for this rope. Okay, which means now that we know lambda, we can calculate the total amount of actual energy in joules in the rope at its lowest point. So 324 times 294 all over 16. There is at this point 5953.5 five joules of energy all stored in the rope okay there's no kinetic energy because the she's stationary at the minute so all of the energy in this problem is currently stored in the rope as elastic energy then she comes back up so now she's only got a drop of six meters so let's redraw that's still 5, this is 6 this time, 5 that side. Pythagoras, you can figure out that that's 7.81, and that's 7.81, okay, which means the total length is 15.62 metres, but the extension when you take off the 8 original is 7.62 meters so L is 8 and X is 7.62 okay. now then to work out the kinetic energy let's have a look so to work out the kinetic energy that the acrobat has it's the 5953.5 joules that were stored at its lowest point okay minus mgh because she's come back up six meters since then okay minus any elastic energy that's still in the rope so that is 5953.5 when the acrobat comes up six meters um, 50 times 9.8 times 6 is 2,940. So we've lost that energy from the rope already just to raise her 6 metres. And there's also 294 times 7.62 squared all over 16 joules of energy still in the rope. Okay. That leaves us with a kinetic energy of 1946.5 joules when you deduct the mgh and you deduct what's still in the form of elastic energy okay 
If you divide by 25, which is half her mass, so a half half mv squared is 1946.5 joules, you'll get a velocity of 8.82 .8 meters per second with the energy that's left to be converted to kinetic. So I hope that helps and shows you where I got some of my answers from. And hopefully you can use that to answer some more ones uh, I'll be putting on for you.